Hello, my name is Ricky. Welcome back for another history reaction. We're going to end the Alexander the Great and the series with one of his speeches. There was a lot of different videos uh, that had this, but I felt like I definitely need to go to Epic History TV channel. Maybe to get some closure on the same channel we have been listening to the uh, the Great War, the Great Campaign. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, before we watch the video, if you do enjoy me doing reactions to history, let me know by smacking the like. Of course, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that. And of course, before we watch or listen, uh, we say thank you so much to the channel members and the patron patrons. For the incredible support. Thank you. A shout out to the Supreme Tier donators over by Patreon and of course channel membership. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And we have personal shout outs to the ultimate supporters only available on Patreon Deja, Walt, Roni, Dwayne, Tammy, Kevin, Dana, Troy, and Sarah, and of course Robert. Thank you so much. Thank you. Incredible. Uh, so let's do this. And of course, if you want to go check out the channel, Epic History TV, link for the channel, and of course, for the video we're going to watch is available right down in the description. Go, go there and give them the support that they so much deserve. In a brilliant 10-year campaign, Alexander and his Macedonian army conquer much of the known world from Egypt to the Indus River. In 324 BC, they returned to Opis near modern Baghdad, where Alexander ordered some of his Macedonian veterans to return home. But angry at perceived insults to their honor, as well as Alexander's adoption of Persian customs, they, oh shit, mutinied. Mutinated. Mut yeah, they turned on him. We know that. We know that. Uh, <clears throat> I really want to read this. According to the uh, ancient historian Arian, Alexander executed 13 ringleaders bef before confronting the army. Alexander's exact words are not known. But modern historian believe Arian records the essence records the essence of the real moment of history, passed down by eyewitnesses. I got goosebumps. <laughs> what I'm about to say isn't meant to stop you returning home. As far as I care, you can go wherever you wish. But I want you to know how you have behaved towards me, and how I have treated you. I'll begin, as is right, with my father, Philip. When he found you, you were mere peasants, wearing hides, tending a few sheep on the mountain slopes, and you could barely defend them from your neighbors. Under him, you began living in cities, with good laws and customs, and he turned you from slaves into rulers over those very barbarians who used to plunder your land. He conquered most of Thrace, taking the best harbors so there was trade and prosperity, and put the mines to steady work. The Thessalians, they used to terrify you. Well, we rule them now. The Athenians and Thebans, always looking for a chance to attack Macedonia, were so humbled myself playing my small part in the war, that they no longer take tribute from Macedonia, but instead depend upon us for their protection. My father went to the Peloponnese and put their house in order. Then he was declared supreme commander of all the Greeks for the campaign against the Persians, an honor not just for himself, but for all Macedonians. This is what my father Philip did for you. 
great enough on its own, but small compared to what you've gained from me. I crossed the Hellespont, even though back then the Persians still commanded the sea. I defeated the satraps of the great King Darius and made you rulers of Ionia, Aeolus, Phrygia and Lydia and took Miletus by siege. The rest of the land surrendered willingly and their wealth became yours. All the riches of Egypt and Cyrene, which I won without a fight, are yours now. Syria. Palestine, Mesopotamia, Babylonia, all belong to you. The wealth of Lydia, the treasures of Persia, the jewels of India and the outer sea. You are now satraps. You are generals and captains. What have I held back for myself apart from this purple cloak and diadem? Nothing. No man can point to my riches, only the things I hold in trust for you all. And what would I do with them anyway? I eat what you eat. I get no more rest than you. Many times I have spent the night on watch so that you could sleep soundly. Who among you believes he's worked harder for me than I have for him? Come on. If you've got scars, strip and show them to me. I'll show you mine. There isn't one part of my body, the front at least, that doesn't bear a wound. My body's covered in scars from every weapon you can think of. Swords, arrows, stones, clubs. All for the sake of your lives, your glory and your wealth. And yet here I still am, leading you as conqueror of land and sea, rivers, mountains and the plains. We've celebrated our weddings together. Many of your children will be cousins of my own. I've paid off your debts without asking how you got them, even though you're paid well enough and pillage every city we take. Many of you wear golden crowns, badges of courage and honor given you by me. Any one of us who was killed, who met a glorious end, we buried with full honors. Many now stand immortalized by bronze statues in Macedonia. Their families are honored and pay no taxes. Under my command, not one man has been killed fleeing the enemy. And now I wanted to send back some of you who've been wounded or crippled, or have grown old, to be welcomed back home as heroes. But since you all wish to go, then all of you, go! Go home and tell them that your king, Alexander, conqueror of the Persians, Medes, Bactrians, and Scythians, who now rules over the Parthians, Chorasmians, and Hyacanians as far as the Caspian Sea, who's marched over the mountains of the Hindu Kush, crossed the Oxus and Tanais rivers, even the Indus, first across it since Dionysus himself. I would have crossed the high faces too if you hadn't cowered in fear. Who sailed into the great sea from the mouth of the Indus. Who crossed the desert of Gedrosia where no one had ever led an army. Who took Carmenia while my fleet sailed the Persian Gulf. When you get home, you tell them that when you made it back to Susa, you abandoned him and went home, leaving him under the protection of the foreigners you'd conquered. Perhaps this report of yours will seem glorious in the eyes of men and worthy in the eyes of the gods. Be gone! Oh my god. <clears throat> After the speech, the Macedonian tr troops begged Alexander for forgiveness, leading to an emotional reconciliation between the king and his army.
Alexander began to plan for the conquest. But in Babylon, less than a year later, he succumbed to an unknown illness and died aged just 32. <clears throat> Thank you to all the Patreon supporters who helped create this video. If you'd like exclusive early access to videos like this and the chance to vote on future topics, please visit the Epic History TV Patreon page. Oh, mighty days. <laughs> That was, uh, <clears throat> I couldn't pause. I mean, my brain said that you, you get to pause, Raki, because, uh, you know, it's, it's a reaction. But I, I couldn't. I was completely spellbound by the words. And I like how he <clears throat> turned everything on them, what I did for you, including what his father did. Uh, and I, I would really like, I would really like to be there when the army realize oh crap <laughs> i'm sorry and hear the talk i wouldn't understand a bit of it but i could probably pretend let's pretend i know what they're saying and just be there and, and see what they said to each other to from alexander from the uh from the army how did they say uh how did they apologize to him and uh it's just it's completely mind-blowing. Of course, this is 95% probably not true what he said, but I felt like it could be something that Alexander could say. I feel like he, is, he was one of those that <clears throat> he was probably very ego, but then again, he was a humble individual at the same time. That's what I feel when I'm thinking about Alexander the Great, that he was vague, very ego, egocentric, but then again, very humble and always paid respect to other cultures, which is evidently didn't was appreciated by his army that he he was paying a respect to new Persian customs and stuff like that. But that was a, just a token of his respect. I I I I I really enjoy this. I really really enjoy this. This is definitely one of the best series we did. I did. If you did enjoy this, I want you to smack the like and, of course, hit that subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that. Let me know if you actually do enjoy the history reactions. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ricky. You stay safe.